Well, uh, Bondi and Mundu, back in Montagua today. We're yes. going to get on with the Q and A. All right, this is going to be quite an interesting Q and A today. We had a lot of questions and a lot of very different questions as well to what we've ever had before. So we're going to start off with a question from Fred Aaron's, and he is going straight in <laughs> with, "Can you tell us about your political views? Yeah. Whether you're left wing, right wing, <laughs> or in the centre, which UK political parties you voted for?" If a UK general election were held tomorrow, who would you vote for? What do you think of May, Corbyn, Sturgeon and Cable? What annoys you most about UK politics and what do you like most about it? If one of you became UK Prime Minister tomorrow, what are the top three priority policies you'd immediately implement? Thanks, Fred Ahrens. <laughs> okay, well that's a big, big question. Yeah. Well, politics is a very subjective and abrasive conversation to have with anybody isn't yeah. it so don't they say you should never talk about politics and religion, religion yeah and we're doing both <laughs> <laughs> so we don't really normally talk much about it between each other yeah. or in the videos but our views on politics are a little bit different so we'll kind of cover it in a general overview we believe that there is no perfect party there has never been in the history of politics one party that's made the perfect system anywhere in the world. Because of that, it's very difficult to say if we were left ring or right ring or in the centre because I don't believe that any of those parties have got it right yet. What we do believe though is that more young blood should be injected into government. I think that a lot of the ways that we do things are quite old fashioned and a younger perspective would set us up for the future. It would help our children and our children's children to develop for the problems we come up with in the future. Yeah, hello, <laughs> hello new generation. <laughs> Did you hear us talking about your future? Oh. Yeah? And decide to get involved? <laughs> We're talking about politics. <laughs> you close in the window. <laughs> oh, that's good, that will help us actually. Yeah, better lighting. Okay, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hello, are you getting involved? <laughs> <laughs> I think one good example of what I'm talking about is I read in some articles that young people that have come into wealth are starting to invest in protecting us from the rise of artificial yes! intelligence. And that's something that probably the older generation doesn't care about yet because they don't see it as a threat. And I think that kind of young thinking would be useful in the future for people in a position of power. Forward thinking yeah. to what may happen for generations to come rather than right now. Yeah. I personally think, and you as well, that the way the whole voting system works needs to be modernised. Yeah. Definitely, 100%. It needs to be digitalised, it needs to be tamper proof. Yeah not giving out little bits of paper for people to go and write on. Yeah, and having to go to a physical <laughs> registered building. It needs to be immutable, tamper-proof, on a blockchain, something that we can use that is public for everyone to see. So once your vote is, is put in there, that's it. Mm. And nobody can change it. And it, sh it needs to be online, it really does. Mm. And there needs to be more information in one place so we can go on there, read about parties, read about different parties as well, not just the ones that everyone votes for, mm. find out what their policies are, what their roadmaps are, what they're thinking of doing, and then have, yep, I want to vote for that person. Mm. And I think that that would allow smaller parties with better ideas to have a chance mm. at running the, the future yeah. of our country. So it's a difficult <laughs> subject and that's kind of how we think about it, but we are definitely not experts on politics at no. all. So that is the reason why if we were to be put into power, pretty much any of the things I might say on camera right now probably don't work because I've never run a country before. Yeah, and we have spoken about that, like things will crop up and we're like, oh, you know, why aren't they doing that? That's ridiculous. And then when we speak about it longer, we realise what a difficult... Mm. thing to have to work in it yeah. really is like you you, you no think you have uncovered one problem and then by doing that you've you've created another three yeah. so it really is a very difficult it's easy to area. judge yeah other politicians for the decisions they make yeah. and the things they've said and done but if you were to do the opposite you don't really know what the results going to be because no. 
we don't run countries. Yeah. Because <laughs> it'd be like when we have the, oh, if I won the lottery com uh, conversation, mm. I'd do this. And then you'd be like, yeah, but what about that? What about I'd, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. What about that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, right, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't. But I hope that that kind of gives you an idea of our stance on things and the kind of things we talk about behind the scenes. Yeah. Next up, Leah Whitehorse. I'm curious to know whether you follow a spiritual path, faith or religion. Well, most people might already know that I've been following us for a long time, that I was <laughs> raised as a Jehovah's Witness when I was a kid, but I'm not practicing anymore. Some of my family still are. Uh, I have a belief that, they're, that we were designed. I like the idea that we have some form of creator, but I don't know exactly who that creator mm. might be because nobody really knows. So in my mind right now, my belief is that there is definitely some kind of power out there that humans can't understand which is why we all crave something more. We're always looking mm. for the meaning of life and everything. Mm. But I don't think that any one, I don't follow any one particular religion right now. I take bits of everything and I make that my belief. For me, I'm similar. I was christened as a baby and my family or my grandparents were Christians and went to church every Sunday as they did. I don't follow Christianity at all anymore. A faith gives people hope and something to work towards and gives people give some people purpose purpose yeah I guess in a way uh, for me I get that feeling that same kind of feeling spiritual feeling and a, a connection when I'm in nature and when I'm meditating by the sea or something like that I'll have that same feeling and I'll feel emotion and I'll feel that kind of spiritual connection spiritual connection mm. to the world by being outdoors in nature so for me I find that I don't put myself in one particular box to say I am this that or the other yeah I see good in lots of different types of religions where's Nair? where's Nair? you find him but I'm not following any religion. Come on you then. got him. <sighs> and we do obviously believe that everyone has the right to believe in whatever they want, whatever makes them feel like they've got their purpose and makes them feel happy and just give them hope. If we don't have any conflicting conversations about it, if anyone has a strong belief, we're happy to just go, cool, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy. Yeah, <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Little pop. Excuse you. Excuse me. Next question that we have from Elena, and she says, "Looking forward to the What We Eat Wednesdays. It's so amazing that you include some vegan content here, and in a very unintrusive and inspiring way. Thank you. What are some inspirational vegans or plant-based experts you've come across on social media or in books over the past years? There's quite a few. <laughs> I started off loving Deliciously Ella, and that's kind of what kick-started." me into finding lots of recipes and things like that. I've got all three of Deliciously Ella books yeah. and they are really good and she, I do refer to them. She was inspirational because she was very sick and yeah. she used vegan recipes and vegan diet to basically heal herself from something that doctors couldn't work out mm. and that inspired her to make yeah. these recipe books. Another one is Naomi Smart, she's actually a YouTuber who released her own cookbook and it is all plant based and she's also really good and has some great ideas. Mm, that's where some of like our dessert recipes get inspired from. Yeah, a magazine that I really love is this vegan food and living magazine my mum sends me out <laughs> um, from the UK. That's a really good, I've got loads of these and I get loads of inspiration from these magazines and another one here, Vegan Life. This one is great because it has loads of articles in it rather than just recipes. It's got, yeah. it's a bit more chunky and a bit more, you can get your teeth into yeah. it and have a read as well. It teaches you about like nutrition and yeah. vitamins and interesting subjects like what kind of food could you feed a cat if you were yeah. a vegan and didn't want to give them meat? Because yeah. that's a question that I'm sure yeah. some people think about, like, if you're vegan, should you be feeding meat? Yeah. I mean, we still feed meat to Eden. Yeah, I know, and but you can actually have a vegan dog. Yeah, but Who apparently, <laughs> apparently you can't have a vegan cat. No. They have to eat some form of fish. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, online, we like to follow a vlogger called Ellen Fisher. Mm. She's got a beautiful family living in Hawaii 
and she shares recipes. She also has an online uh, an ebook, isn't it? Yeah, I think she's a bit more advanced. She's yeah, very. She's been vegan for twelve yeah, years. I she's, think she's very vegan, so she's all out. And, yeah. and but it's just quite inspirational to see that level of living, growing yeah. your own food, and just yeah. everything is and raw Stormy, and natural. <laughs> Stormy likes watching them as well because she likes her two sons. So whenever they come on, she's like, "Boy, boy!" Yeah. And when they get their juice or their smoothie, Story wants to then go and run and make a smoothie. So yeah. that's really good. <laughs> One of my favourite YouTube channels as well is the Happy Pair. Mm. Two We've Irish guys, before, yeah, two Irish guys. They do like quick, funny recipes on on yeah. YouTube, and it's all very simple stuff. Yeah, they, they also have two cookbooks out. As they well. do, and they have a cafe in Ireland. Yeah. And what's good about them is they show you how to do it cheaply as mm. well, because a lot of people are under this um, myth that vegan eating is very expensive. Then they'll show you how cheap they things give are. You the price list. Price of what list. they just bought to make yeah. the recipe. They so just spell the myth. Good. Yeah. It's good and simple recipes, five minute recipes mm. they do as well. So yeah. those are the people we follow on social media yeah. and in traditional media and we get our inspiration from for being vegan. Yeah. I should note as well that, that we are still quite new to being vegan so we've got a lot to learn yeah. and these are good ways for us to do that mm. as well. Stick in here now with the vegan theme, we've got another question here from Bob Hood and he says, I love all your beautiful family vlogs. Regarding your veganism and story, before her adulthood will you ever give her a choice? I don't mean this is a troll question, but I have never thought of that aspect of it until I became began watching your channel. That's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, don't we don't see it as a troll comment? No, it's <laughs> don't just, worry. It's not the first time we've been asked it. No. Family have asked us to. They basically say, you know, what are you going to do when she starts asking for certain things? Yeah. Um, it all comes down to education, yeah, basically. And information. And information. And We're going to teach what her. She knows. Yeah. yeah. We're going to teach her about what she eats, what we eat, and the reasons why for her whole life. Yeah. But if she does decide for whatever reason that she still wants to try it, even though she knows it was a piglet before, she knows that it was, you know, might not be good for her from information we've shared with her, she can do it. We, we're not going to be able to force, force, force these kind of things no. forever and it depends on kind of like your idea of adulthood as yeah. well because I mean like a teenager is going to have a lot of choice when they're outside of our eyes so yeah. I think it also a big part of that will be who her friend group is and where we are living mm. and the, the community circle around us as well of vegan foods mm. um i have to admit when i went back to england it was difficult being the only vegan and trying to keep on track not not because of the country no no because of the, because of the, environment. Yeah, the environment i'm the only vegan yeah. <laughs> in the village <laughs> <laughs> so it was quite difficult um, but it, it I planned like... ahead a little bit and I done an online shop that I had sent to my sister's house so when I arrived I knew I had this that and the other I knew I had milks for story and yogurts that she could eat and chocolate even I got dairy free chocolate for her a cake substitute because it was a birthday that we went to celebrate I had cakes there that me and story could enjoy rather than having to refuse the cake and when mm. it's in front of us it did work to a degree but it was also quite challenging to keep on top of what story was eating in reason she didn't eat any meat or anything like that but you know there might have been a sweet or something yeah, <laughs> that i didn't something, see yeah. that maybe you know it it, we're, we're, it was difficult we're not so. militant with it yet either no. if story picks something up and nibbles on it and it's got some milk in it we'll be like ah oh, well it's fine this has happened now yeah. and it's not the end of the world don't make her throw it up or something no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah i think well, that's what it comes down to we it will be the environment that she grows up in yeah. her friend group the information that she knows about things and i do think veganism is a massively growing area yeah there are more vegan cafes and vegan foods cropping up every day yeah. even here in portugal that's true and it's becoming more widely known and accepted yeah and trendy in a way in, in some, some places, places yeah, isn't it, it is. so i don't think by the time story is old enough to say what she wants to eat and what she doesn't want to eat there won't be that much of an issue with it because i think we'll we're giving her the information mm. to make her own decisions as well and to be healthy and nutritional value and all that kind of thing. And so. if she does decide to be a full blown meat eater in the future, we were meat eaters for most of our yeah, life. Of so it's... we're obviously not going to yeah. judge her for that. I mean, we can sit happily with other family members and eat our food next to somebody eating fish and yeah. meat. So it's, we're, we're very accepting yeah. people. Um, and another thing I just want to say is, a kind of question to put back is that 
you say we don't give or will we give Story a choice like it's not her choice to be vegan or vegetarian but is it any child's choice if they're eating meat do you mm. sit there and make a decision you're not giving that child the choice or the option to be vegetarian because mm. you're giving them meat from the beginning the they don't thing. have the choice to say I don't want to eat chicken I don't want to eat eggs yeah. so it's the same thing just the other way around yeah. it's just what we eat in the house and she eats yeah. it too we are on to the last question now from Daisy May. That is a really sweet name, similar to my niece, is Darcy May. Yeah. <laughs> Spelt the same way as well. <laughs> uh, Daisy asks, if you all could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? This is a great question. Oh, this is something um, we talk about all the time. Yeah. I mean, it obviously is changing all the it time. Does, Our yeah. minds are always changing. You probably know that about us. Yeah. But we've basically come to a decision, really, that we would love to have a like a lovely farm country house in England. Yeah, I would love to move back to England and have a nice country abode somewhere in the mm. rolling hills of the English countryside or surrounded by, you know, nice nature, mm. greenery. <laughs> I mean, yes, we've lived in loads of different places, but it's nice to have a piece of where we mm. were born, a piece yeah. of real home that we could keep. Yeah. So a lovely countryside house there would be lovely. Yeah. And then when we get bored of that, which inevitably would happen, <laughs> we'd want to be able to afford to travel to mm. somewhere and have that Mediterranean like getaway. Uh, for me, it's more tropical. Like I, I feel drawn more to palm trees and I, I do miss the Asian tropics yeah. and I, 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 I've never been to Bali but I just have a feeling like when I think about moving somewhere else Bali gives me like oh that looks really nice mm. and there's lots of vegan places in Bali and yeah. <laughs> so I, I would like to visit Bali but I don't know about living there mm. um, living there permanently probably not but if we were to have the English country house yeah. somewhere in Portugal and somewhere in Southeast Asia that would be that greedy would yeah that would be greedy <laughs> but it would be cover all the boxes yeah. wouldn't it I, I don't think, think we would... wherever we are wherever we feel most at home is where we will end up eventually mm. yeah. and that is where we will be happiest yeah. but we just we haven't quite found it yet no. I think we, we basically say to ourselves right now that if we could have a home somewhere where we didn't have where it was easy and but we also had the ability to travel when we felt cabin fever fever mm. that would be perfect mm. so to round that up quickly for me I would like to live in Bali for a little bit mm. and possibly back in England for a little bit as well so yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing's off the table no <laughs> so if you want to get involved in next week's Q&A we have got some questions left over we from have, last week yeah, we got loads of questions this week mm. and it would have been too much a very long video if we answered them all so but now if you want to get involved in it go to patreon.com forward slash eight miles from home leave your question in the post that says Q&A Friday and we will answer it Yay. in the following video <laughs> so links below yeah and right here yep and if we didn't answer your question this week it will more than likely be a next week's one that's right so that's it yeah and we'll see you next time bye. bye you found a green one didn't you peppers too oh wow bouncy bag hey story what do you think of the view i feel like i'm in hawaii or something <laughs> hello <laughs> Well, that was a chance meeting. We're almost at the church. Eden just done something really crazy. She